During August, we're doing talks about the various sections of the communion service. This is the second one. It seems rather strange to talk about the liturgy of the word when we are in the middle of doing it. I'll be talking about what we have just done, what we are currently doing, and what we will be doing shortly. The liturgy of the word consists of the readings, the gospel, the sermon, the creed, and the intercessions. If you look at any of the service books, this white one, the green one for ordinary time, the blue one for Advent, the red one for Christmas and other feasts, the lilac one for Lent, and the green one for Easter, they all include the same elements in this section. The people in our gospel reading had been asking for bread. Jesus had recently fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two small fish. They wanted him to keep supplying the bread, but he wanted to provide them with something much more important. As he had realized during his time in the wilderness, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God as it is written in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. So, the readings are the words that come from the mouth of God, through the minds and the pens of the Jews and the earliest Christians, and through translations from one language to another over the centuries. The Old Testament readings were the scriptures, the Bible that Jesus knew, the Psalms were his hymn book. He knew and quoted from everything that we know of as the Old Testament. The New Testament readings are a record of the activities of the earliest church and some of the letters that the apostles wrote in answer to the problems some of those early congregations struggled with. The Old Testament gives us the wisdom and understanding that the Jews had learned and believed about God, about his love and about his dealings with humankind. The New Testament gives us a record of God's support and inspiration of the earliest church. The passages that we read and hear week by week are the basis of our knowledge of God's dealings with those who recognized and worshiped him throughout the ages. We do not pick these passages at random. The whole of the Church of England and many other branches of the Anglican Church follow the sequences of readings specified in this purple book, the lectionary. Here we are given the readings and psalms to be used at Holy Communion, morning prayer and evening prayer for each day of the church's year. That means that each Sunday and every weekday we will be reading and thinking about the same Bible passages as many other Christian people. God is speaking to us through these words. This is important so we should concentrate and listen carefully to the readings. As the readings are the words that come from the mouth of God, in the same way, the Gospels give us the words and actions of Jesus. When we hear the Gospel passage read, we are hearing Jesus speaking to us. That is why we stand, if we can, and turn towards the person reading the passage. We are standing in the presence of Christ and turning towards him in our midst. Again, the sequence of gospel readings is given to us in the lectionary. There is a three year cycle of readings. This year, many of the readings are from Mark's gospel. Next year, they will be from Luke's gospel. And in the year after that, from Matthew's gospel. Readings from John's Gospel are included in every year, usually at special times, such as Easter and feast days. Jesus is speaking to us through these words. This is important, so we should concentrate and listen carefully to what is being read. Once we have heard the word of God and the teachings of Jesus, 
someone who has been able to think about these passages will give a sermon or a talk or do an interview or a piece of drama to give the congregation a chance to think about them in more detail. It is as if the preacher takes the passages, expands them here and there, perhaps explains a concept and then suggests how they can be applied to the lives of people living here and now. After the sermon, there will be a short pause, a silence for any new ideas to settle in the mind. God's message is being given to us through these words. This is important, so we should concentrate and listen carefully. Then the whole congregation can respond to the words of instruction and wisdom that God has set before us. We stand and say the creed. We state again the basis of our faith and hope. We tell again in brief the heart of the gospel and our understanding of the character and works of God as creator, saviour and strengthener. In the different seasons, we use different versions of the creed. In Advent, Lent and Easter, we use the Apostles' Creed. On Trinity Sunday, we might use the Athanasian Creed. At most other times, we use the Nicene Creed. These statements of belief were each formulated by convocations of bishops at different times during the 4th and 5th centuries to counteract various heresies, mistaken beliefs about Jesus and about the nature of the Trinity. It is our chance to proclaim what we understand and what we believe. This is important. Having restated our reverence and trust in God's loving care for humanity, a representative of the people lays before God our concerns for our neighbours and for the world. Prayer is an act of faith. We cannot deny all responsibility for the evils in the world if we are not prepared to pray about them. We now present our worries and hopes to God. We allow the promptings of the Holy Spirit to intercede with the Father as our prayers present, are presented to him. We are involving ourselves in the salvation of the world. The intercessor is speaking for us and we should concentrate, listen and echo the petitions with our hearts and minds. This is important. We bring our prayers together by all joining in the family prayer, the Lord's Prayer. This again is an activity that all Christians will be doing. At any moment during the day and the night, this prayer is being said by someone, somewhere, in one of so many different languages. We are expressing our solidarity with Jesus and one another by praying this same prayer together. This is important. The Liturgy of the Word is the section of the service where the lay members of the congregation have their greatest opportunity to personally take part in the service. It is the time when all can offer their minds for understanding and their hearts for worship. It is the time when individuals can step out and offer their voices to do the readings or to provide the intercessions. It is our opportunity to serve God publicly and personally. This also is important. Having broken the word, we now move on towards breaking the bread. And this talk will be given on the week after next. Amen.